Hello and welcome to the third part of this card wipe effect tutorial where card wipe as you can see is more than just a transition although effectively card wipe is a reveal and you can use it to reveal single things or multiple things it's more than that it's actually an effect that can be used in lots of different ways and one of the ways it's quite interesting is that it is a 3D effect in the sense that it can work with composition cameras and, and light or its own lighting system and its own camera system so we're going to have a little look at its own camera system in this particular one and you'll see here that we've got camera system option and if you've got the drop down you've got three options so effectively this is a 3D effect it's turned everything that we're seeing into 3D and once you've chosen camera position which is the default choice the camera position tab is open to you and you can actually go in and you can rotate it so for instance Y rotation which will turn it around just going to reset that one you've got X rotation which is going to sort of flip it backwards and forwards I'm going to reset that one and then sort of rotating around itself you've actually got Z as well so you've got X, Y and Z that you can actually rotate this item in which means you can use it for a reveal however look what happens when I do a Y rotation if I do a complete Y rotation so I can see the other side before it's been fully revealed so make that 180 you'll see that there's a number of issues I can't really see everything properly the pictures all cut up and looking wrong and the actual lighting is terrible okay before we get to dealing with that you also have position for the camera so you've got X and Y position for the camera but notice you've also got Z position and you've got focal length I'm just going to move with the position which effectively gives us the ability to zoom in and out focal length will do very much a very similar thing okay and you've even got transform orders which I'm not going to get into but it's just the way that these can be seen you can actually decide you're going to do rotates before positions or positions before rotations but I'm not going to go into those bits and pieces but I do have a problem in that I can't see the background very well now you're going to have this with an image until it has done a full transition and the background image is fully on view you're going to get some sort of weird look and regarding light you've actually got a lighting tab here and it's not the first light that you need to play with if you ever need to see the back so if I do a full transition to 100% you can see that the back is not at all clear so what I can do is I can go down to the ambient light not the point light at the top but the ambient light and when you start to pull the ambient light up you can actually get a better view on the back now the disadvantage of this is that when you do actually turn back so if I take my Y rotation back to zero you're going to see that it's blown out on the other side click in there and take that to zero so by turning the ambient lighting up I've effectively blown out the background so it's worth remembering I'm going to right click and you can reset these if you're not sure so it's, you can see that the original was 0 0.25 so if you are going to be using the ambient light because you want to see the back better when you come back to the front you need to have animated the ambient light so that you don't blow out the end results so if I reset back to zero you can see that's great however when I rotate around 180 degrees I just click in here and do 180 you can see that it's very dark I need to play with the ambient light and everything looks terrible it's not really worked everything's it's not just that it's upside down but everything seems to be in the wrong place as well so you just need to bear that in mind if you're working with this one so if I go back up and I change my back layer once again from the video file to the background comp which just happened to be the fractal noise you can still see that there are issues with lines so it's whatever is on the front that really matters unless you actually have cards in which case when you do the transition and they're split up into cards at least they're still visible and usable okay even though on this particular instance I might want to take my Z rotation through 180 degrees at this point to get it looking the right way okay so just bear in mind that there are going to be issues and if I now turn my Y rotation back to zero everything will be upside down again and of course you can see there the ambient lights way off so let's take that ambient light back down to 0.25 just simply by right clicking and going to reset so it takes it back to the right levels and then we can take this back to 100% you can see it's now all upside down because I've also been playing with Z rotation so you do need to be a little bit careful however we could try adding our own camera system so let's create a camera so you go to layer new camera or control alt shift 
C or Command Option Shift C to create a new camera. We'll just go with a standard 50mm camera, click OK. And there's now a camera in our composition. And what we can do is we can go from using their camera position to using the comp camera. And it's now using the comp camera. Now, comp cameras are notoriously difficult to animate. You need to bear that in mind. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a null object. So I'm going to go Control Alt Shift Y. The alternative is Layer New Null Object. Command Option Shift Y for a Mac. And this is going to be my camera controller. So I'm going to hit Enter and call it Cam Control. And I'm going to parent the camera to the Cam Control. So I'm going to take the parent. If it's not up, you can right click in here, anywhere on this bar, go to Columns and make sure that you can see parent or you can play with the switches at the bottom down here to make sure that you see whatever you need to see okay I've got parent up so I'm going to take the camera I'm going to parent it to comp control so now the camera is being driven by this null object so if I choose R for rotation it's still only a 2D layer I must make it a 3D layer to actually control this camera and now when I rotate around you can see I'm rotating around the scene and I'm getting very very similar results however if I start to zoom with the camera things are going to get a little bit more confusing and this is why the individual camera position is probably easier to control because it is actually working out rotations before it's doing positions so if I hit P for position on this one and I start to say zoom out a bit by moving the Z to a negative value, the third to a negative value, and then I'm to go back to rotation, and I start playing with rotation, you'll see it's going to rotate around a different place, because it's rotating around the null, it's not rotating around this actual layer. So if you want to use a comp camera, you need to bear in mind that it's going to operate in a very different way to the internal camera system. I think the internal camera system is easier the only way that you can really use a comp camera successfully in this way is probably to create a camera rig, which I've done other tutorials for, which would allow you to separately move rotation to position. At the moment though, I'm actually going to use not the comp camera, but the camera position, and I'm just going to select my comp camera, control, and my comp camera, hit delete, and we're back to using the comp camera. If you do, by the way, use corner pins, you'll see that you've got your own tab for corner pins and you can start to move around where those corner pins are going to be to actually get a sort of a perspective view of how things are going to look by playing with those corner pins so you can sort of get the uh, I know the Luke I am your father you know Star Wars type look if you play around with the corner pins so just bear in mind you've got that option if you want to play with it and you, there's other bits and pieces you can play with so we're not going to use corner pins however we are going to carry on with the camera position so there we are with the camera position we've looked briefly at all the different bits and pieces that can do you've seen that you've got your own lighting system notice that you can also use either a distance source a point light or the first comp light so you could create your own composition light if you wanted to give it a different kind of look now a point light isn't going to make an awful lot of difference but this first one is the intensity if you start to pull it up we can try and work out where the point light is by clicking on this item here so it's right in the middle so we can move it if we want to a different place in our composition just by simply clicking over here and we can turn the intensity down for that particular one what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn down the ambient light so that we don't see it so much we can turn the intensity down for that one but we can also then shade it in a different way because we've moved it to a different point of course that'll be more noticeable the more intense the light is as to the effect that it has you can see that changing as we move it around by default it's obviously slap bang in the middle which is where I'm going to leave it for the moment we can even change the light color so if we really want to change it and again notice that it is animatable so you can have the light color changing as you move through this particular effect I'm going to leave it at white so we can change its position and we can also have a distance source if we like or as I say you can use the first comp light if you wish so you can play around with all these bits and pieces to actually get a good lighting for your scene clearly that is massively overdone so I'm going to again right click on light intensity click reset and if you want to play with the light depth you can actually use that to get a sort of a fall off on light so if you pull the light depth down you can begin to get sort of a fall off which is almost giving you a vignette type of look 
by playing with the light depth. So you can really have a lot of fun playing with these lights and getting a very different feel for how everything's going to look at the end. Now I'm going to reset my camera position, so I'm going to reset my Z position. So bring that back to where it is. So we've played with cameras, we've played with lights. The other thing that we can play with is materials. So if I just make sure that my lighting is using a point source, turn up the intensity a little bit, and I go down to my materials, I can say change the diffuse reflections start to pull those up you can see the whole thing kind of gets much more reflective looking like a material that's more reflective diffuse is going to affect everything specular is going to affect particularly where the lights would shine off in a spot form so the light is in the middle and as I start to pull up specular you can see that it's where the light is that you're beginning to see that specular effect and you can play with highlight sharpness you're not going to see an awful lot when you're in a standard mode but if you were to just reset that one if you were to turn up the specular so that you really are getting a specular and you play with those highlight sharpness you can make it bigger or smaller you can make it a lot more sharp so it, it gets to the point where it really looks like very shiny plastic almost as opposed to a much more diffuse material um, so these are the sorts of options that you can play with with the materials I'm going to reset all of those to their standard settings and in the next tutorial we're going to start playing with position jitter and rotation jitter and create something a little bit more interesting. My name's Andrew Davis and thanks for watching.